Hello Bobcats. Today in this video we will be discussing ternary ionic compounds. Now ternary ionic compounds are compounds that are made of more than two types of elements. Two types of elements. So an example would be calcium carbonate. Now here we have a calcium, a carbon, and an oxygen. So we have three different elements here. And these include polyatomic ions. Now polyatomic, poly meaning more than one. So these are uh, a, uh, ions that are made up of more than one type of element. Polyatomic ions. Now, there um, are several different polyatomic ions, and the, the, I'm going to give you a list of the nine most common, and then we'll also go through um, some patterns that we may see from these nine most common, and then I'll give you a, a list of some that are, are common, but not as common as these nine that I give you. You need to memorize these, because you do not get to use um, a list on the, your te test. Now let's start out. First we'll have NO3 1 minus. NO3 that's a nitrate. It has to exist as a single unit. You cannot break it apart. That NO3 cannot be separated from each other. And this is a covalently bonded molecule that has a charge. And so that nitrate ends in 8. Then we have SO4 2 minus. That'd be Sol fate then we have PO4 3 minus this would be phosphate you notice that they end in 8 we have CO3 2 minus this is carbonate and the thing is these are oxy anions and the reason we call them oxy anions is that they are uh, anions, polyatomic anions that are that include a lot of oxygen, several oxygen uh, atoms in them. And they will end in 8. And so we have also C2H3O2 1 minus which is acetate. Now acetate can be written um, differently and I'm going to show you another common form of acetate. Uh, or we could write it as C H three C O O one minus and usually in organic chemistry that's the way you'll see it. Then um, we have C L O three one minus which is chlorate. Now in this case I need to mention that um, if you have a halogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine, you can substitute a halogen for another halogen and you'll have a very similar um, polyatomic ion. In other words, if I put a bromine here and it's BrO3 1 minus, then you'd say bromate. Or I can put an iodine here, IO3 1 minus, and be iodate. So you can substitute one halogen for other halogens. Now, th these others that I'm going to show you are not oxy anions. We have hydroxide, that's OH1 minus. Then we have cyanide, that's CN1 minus. And the last one I'm going to give you, because if you notice here we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The ninth most common one would be NH4 1 plus. And this is the only cation the only polyatomic cation and this is ammonia and this is the cation that would be written um, in an ionic compound that is not a metal so every other time a positive charge will be the metal but this is the anti the cation that can be written as part of a poly, uh, ionic compound that is not a metal now these are the most common, the nine most common. You definitely need to memorize these. Now, 
So let's practice and see what it is uh, like writing formulas and naming ionic compounds with polyatomic ions. So writing formulas and naming with polyatomic ions. Okay. So let's uh, get started. Uh, let's look at the first one. Let's do, uh, let's take a sodium. Now sodium's in group one, so it's a one plus. And then let's do nitrate, NO3 one minus. And remember that's an oxy anion. And we have to have a neutral molecule, so, or neutral compound, I mean. And so one plus and a one minus is a one to one ratio. So we'd say NaNO3. And naming is very similar, as we mentioned earlier, in binary ionic compounds. You write the name of the uh, cation and the name of the anion. So this would be sodium nitrate. Let's look at another one. Let's say I have lithium, which is also a 1 plus. It's in group 1. And then I have sulfate, SO4, 2 minus. This is a polyatomic anion. Um, again, an oxy anion. And if I do the crisscross, this means that I need one sulfate unit and two lithium ions. So I would write Li2SO4. I have two lithiums and one sulfate ion. Again, we would just name it the, the name of the ions lithium sulfate. I'm going to do a couple more examples to bring up a point that we need to, to address. <laughs> Let's say I have aluminum. Which is a 3 plus And a hydroxide. OH1 minus. Now in this case, um, it says that this three would mean that I indicates that I need three hydroxide and this would mean I need one aluminum. So I'd write A, L, and because I need three hydroxide units, I need to put it in parentheses because they stay as a unit and then put a three there because that says that there are three hydroxides and this would be aluminum hydroxide. Now, what you cannot do, again, is you cannot, I'll show you a couple of things. You cannot write this, so I'll put it in red so you know that, you, and cross through it, but you cannot go O, aluminum, O, H, 3, that's not allowed. And you cannot uh, um, distribute the 3, so you cannot also write A, L, O, 3, H, 3. We cannot do that, okay? So those two are not allowed. This has to stay as a unit. So we have to indicate it as a unit. Let's look at um, another example. If we take uh, magnesium, and magnesium is a 2 plus, and phosphate, PO4, which is a 3 minus. This 2 means I need two phosphate units. This three needs, means I need three magnesium, so we'd write that as Mg3. And because I need multiple phosphate units, I'd put it in parentheses, PO4, and then I would put the two. And then this would be magnesium phosphate. Again, let me emphasize that we do not put a parenthesis if you only need one unit of the polyatomic ion. You only put parentheses if you need more than one unit of the polyatomic ion. And I'm going to draw a line right here just so we can see that we're doing two different things. Okay, so that's how we write the formulas and name the ionic compounds. The next thing I want to do is show you some of the patterns that occur and specifically with 
these ions up here. We're just going to look at the nitrate. So I'm going to put star next to it. Sulfate, phosphate, and chlorate. So those are the ones that, that actually do this or have these patterns that we see. So let me go through that. Now, so let's start with nitrate. Now, nitrate is NO31 minus. And I'll write that again, nitrate. But if nitrate can uh, lose an oxygen and become NO2, it's still the same charge. But now we go from a nitrate to a nitrite. So eight to eight when you lose an oxygen, same charge. It, the next one would be sulfate. So we look at sulfate, SO42 minus. So sulfate. And if I drop an oxygen, that'll be SO3, still the same charge, two minus. And that would be sulfite. And then we have phosphate. So PO43 minus, that'd be phosphate. Drop an oxygen, that'll be PO3, 3 minus, same charge. It is now phosphite. So phosphate, sulfate to sulfite, phosphate to phosphite. Now, that doesn't happen with carbonate or acetate or the others. It just happens with these three. And then, of course, I mentioned earlier that it does happen with the halogen uh, oxyanions. And the deal is the halogen oxyanions actually do more than just lose one oxygen. So if we start with chlorate, ClO3 one minus, this would be chlorate. We lose an oxygen, it'll be ClO2 one minus, this will be chlorite. It can actually lose another one, and we can go to ClO1 minus. That will be hypochlorite. Hypo meaning below, like in hypothermic, it's you know below the temperature. Um, so hypochlorite, that would be one extra less oxygen, and it can also add an extra oxygen to go to ClO4 one minus. Same charge, but now it's going to be per chlorate. Now, I don't know exactly why per, why not hyper, but just think of it as hyperchlorate, above chlorate, but drop the HY. Again, this happens with the halogen, so I can put a BR here and say per bromate. So, example, if I did BRO4, one minus, this would be per bromate. Or if I did um, IO2, one minus, this would be iodite, just like this is chlorite, and so forth. So you can substitute different halogens in um, this group of the halogen oxyanions. Now, the last thing I want to mention here is some other common, not as common as the nine, but other common um, polyatomic ions that you should be very, very familiar with. We have C2O4, um, two minus, this would be oxalate. We would have uh, something like um, N3, one minus, this would be Azide, sorry, azide. Um, HCO3, one minus, that would be bicarbonate, or baking soda as you know it, bicarbonate. Then we have MNO4, one minus, this would be 
permanganate. Um, SCN one minus would be thiocyanate. CRO4, 2 minus would be chromate. Um, CR2O7, 2 minus is dichromate. And then um, two more. O2, 2 minus would be peroxide. Now remember, uh, peroxide you'd have like either a hydrogen, like H2O2, that's hydrogen peroxide, or maybe MnO2, that would be manganese peroxide, but it's part of, a, of an ionic compound. And then last one, just to show you a pattern, here we had bicarbonate, and here the same thing, if we take sulfate and put an H in front, that'd be HSO4, uh, one minus this would be bisulfite, bisulfate. I mean bisulfate. Okay, so these are some other common polyatomic ions. I suggest that you make a list of your own, have them uh, nearby so that you can um, look through them while you do your homework um, and become very familiar with them in practice, so you can do well on an exam. And that is the um, ternary ionic compound lecture.